here in Hawthorne, California, where uh, Mustang Mac E by Ford was just unveiled about an hour ago. And I know, I know what you're guys saying. Uh, how does it compare to Tesla Model Y and all that stuff? And we're definitely going to talk about it. But so I have to say, it's probably a wrong question. But let me let me emphasize something. This is the first real effort from a legacy manufacturer to produce a car that would, I think, be very successful in the mass market, right? So obviously, Model 3, Model Y is in the conversation, but we're talking about a completely different scale. I know we, you know, GM tried with a Bolt and a Bolt. I know other manufacturers have tried as far as legacy manufacturers are concerned, but this is the car for the markets, for the mass markets at the very reasonable price. And of course, and one thing I can't emphasize more, and I think this is this is what's gonna really win a lot of people over, is tons and tons of service centers and dealerships and so forth. And unlike Kia and Hyundai and even, uh, even GM, these cars are completely 100% committed to making sure that every dealership has this car, every service center can serve as this car, and that goes a long way. But the biggest thing that I think why they are really behind this is because they could have named it anything, but they named it Mustang Mach-E. And when you put this big name, this humongous legacy name, if you think about it, in 55 years, there were no member of this new member of this family, and they're adding this, and it's an electric car. I know a lot of Mustang fans are excited about it, but I know a lot of Mustang fans are saying, whoa, 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 what are you doing here? This is an electric car, it doesn't belong here. But you know what? I actually don't care. Ford is telling them it's time to change, and it's time to step into the 21st century and, and join this. And by the way, let me uh, give you a quick uh, walk around, of course, but I gotta tell you, it's the best Tesla imitation I have seen so far, and I mean it in a good way. From the body style, as you can see, they are imitating the the, the Mustang body style fully. Look at the three bar uh, headlight, uh, headlights and the taillights with the tracer going through it, and that is important. So they're keeping the old school Mustang look, but also they're saying, boom, we're disrupting our own, we're disrupting our own design and our own, uh, 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 our own technology, and I absolutely love it. That's where you know they're really, really committed to it. So let's go around. First of all, I still love this color. This is a current Mustang color. The doors, as you can see, are smooth. There are no door handles here at all. The way you open it is you hit this, and it will come out. Somehow they have it locked. This guy's taking a picture with it. But as you can see, I absolutely love the design. It is a good SUV. The only thing I have to say is that this little coat hanger, essentially, is the way you open the car. You open it, and you can come, come out in here. So, but if you go inside just a little bit, as you can see, it is a very much a Model 3 type of the interior with the display that everyone's been missing <laughs> in a Model 3 and obviously will be missing in a Model Y. And I gotta tell you, they've done not only a great job with the exterior, and it really does look like it belongs to the Mustang family, but also on the interior. What they took is, basically they took all the lessons that Tesla, I think, have learned, and all the feedback from Tesla owners, and they essentially, uh, they essentially did it better. If you look at their user interface even, even that is better. Um, I, will, I will probably make a separate video because there's so much to tell about the interface. There's a primary screen and there are cars of the latest, uh, latest um, apps that you've used and there are complete 100% controls that are staying there uh, all the way through no matter what happens with the main part of the screen. And there's even a, 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 a dial that's physical dial kind of a put right uh, at the bottom of the uh, flat screen. I absolutely love it. All right, we can uh, come around. There's a lot of people trying to make videos. Literally, there's like thousands of people. And, and by, if, if you haven't recognized this place from, uh, from uh, uh, my other videos that I've done at the Tesla unveiling, this is exactly the same place. We're the heart of Hawthorne, California. I'll be back here. I'll be back literally here in four days as Tesla's gonna be unveiling its uh, 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 pickup truck. So I might as well leave my stuff here. Now, of course, when you bring a new girl home to your friends and family, everyone's asking like, well, how does it compare with your ex-girlfriend? Well, my ex-girlfriend Tesla, I think it may not be, um, it may really not be fair to compare it. I think the Tesla's niche and people who love technology, they love, they love the latest toys and the latest stuff, but this is not targeting them. They, they, this, this is not the car targeting Silicon Valley techies. 
This is the car targeting the rest of the country, right? The place where I live, which is Sacramento, California. And I think this is where Ford is the first company to realize that, that we don't need to go after the same 1% that's buying Teslas and, and iPaces and so forth. We can actually go for the rest of the 99% of people who wouldn't buy a Tesla. You know, I got to tell you, I know a lot of it's going to sound very weird to a lot of you that, you know, Tesla may not be a cool car in some places, but where I live, some people would buy Tesla even if they could afford it. So, but this, this car from a known manufacturer, Ford is big in most of this country and a lot of around the world, people will buy Ford even though it is an all electric car, right? So it's, it doesn't start with an all electric car, it does start with the fact that it is, uh, it is Ford. Um, sounds odd to a lot of us, but, but I can't stress enough that the fact that it's a Ford and it's a Mustang is what's actually going to sell this car. As you can see, the front of this car as well, pretty much look like a Mustang. They are using a bit of a stretched logo of their, of their uh, uh, Mustang. And you know, the specs are great too. I mean, I'm sure you've heard the specs goes up to 300 miles on a single charge. That's for the uh, longest range. They're gonna have a GT version, which this car actually is. This is the fastest one. About 3.5 uh, seconds, zero to 60. Um, the regular version that you can see over there, actually in red, um, that one goes about 5.5. I'm not gonna lie, when we did the ride along, it was a little bit underwhelming 5.5, but fast enough, quiet, still good torque. Um, the batteries uh, go from 75 kilowatt hour to all the way to 100 kilowatt um, uh, hour battery. So this is a very, very decent car. Um, fast charging up to 150 kilowatts. They already have a deal with Electrify America, which is yet another big deal for uh, for those who will be buying it. In Europe, they have a deal with Ionity. Um, they just told us this. And don't forget, it was great to see uh, uh, their CEO front and center today because this is essentially his baby. This is a Team Addison, as they call it. Uh, let me show you a different color here uh, because uh, this is a regular version of this car. Looks pretty much the same, but you will see that the grill here is kind of a solid grill of the solid color and I'm, 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 I'm digging this as well. Um, the, again, it's really hard to talk about the interface, but I got to tell you, it's like they took stuff from Tesla, learned what worked, what didn't work, and they made it all over again. So if you think about it, you know, when iPhone came out, and everybody, even still, kind of benchmarks bend uh, 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 everybody against an iPhone, but then Android came in and pretty much copied the general concept and did some things better. This is what this uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E is. They've taken a great concept from Tesla. They decided we're not gonna reinvent anything at all. We're gonna take what they did and uh, we're just gonna do it better or more affordable in, in, in some ways. And don't forget the fact that you can service this car anywhere, that they're committed selling these cars and all of their dealerships, it is a huge deal. So, I gotta tell you, I myself am considering uh, 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 um, at least putting a reservation. It's only $500 and they're taking reservations right now. If you guys even like closely thinking about it, I would sell it's not, it's it's probably worth it because it probably doesn't matter where the $500 is. It's in your sa savings account or port savings account. You can always get it back. Uh, and, and don't get me started how you earn earning savings on that, you're not. So I, I love this car in every single way as long as there's a good context understanding that I don't think in no way it is competing with Tesla. I don't think anyone's gonna be deciding between these two cars. Um, yes, the specs are very similar. Yes, there are a lot of stuff that, uh, that's kind of in the same category but I think they are completely different target audience. And I know you're also gonna say, but you know, but Tesla's got a you know, self-driving feature, you know what? I think people who are gonna be buying this car are not gonna care about the self-driving features. They're gonna care more about the fact that it's a Ford, that it's a Mustang, and that it's a service center within a you know, few miles away from them. They're gonna, they're gonna care about that more than they're gonna care uh, about the fact that it's got or doesn't have the self-driving features. By the way, I should mention that it does have some of the, um, the self-driving assistant features, it will keep you in the lane, it will warn you all over the place. Um, so I, I don't want to say they got nothing there, but it's definitely, it's definitely not a competitor as much as everyone's trying to make it to be. So, all right, I'm looking forward to your comments, guy. Let, you know, let me know if you're a current Tesla owner, do you think you would switch to Ford 
I'm sure the answer is probably not, but I'd like to be surprised. And also, if you're just for the market for a, an electric car, do you think this is finally will convince you to get an electric car simply because it comes from a major manufacturer, um, it's got great warranty, and it's got obviously uh, the service centers um, everywhere. From what I understand, a lot of these cars will make it to the dealership right away uh, in about a year. It's kind of funny that they're going to be producing the cheaper versions first, and then the GT more, more expensive version, but that's also going to help a lot of people to be able to afford it from the very beginning. Lease is going to be available right away, but it's going to help a, a, a lot. And of course, uh, like Tesla's a $7,500 tax credit here in the United States, should also be available unless there's something crazy happens uh, with, uh, with that law, which I strongly doubt. All right, looking forward to your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.